Thanks, Karen. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'll start out by saying I'm going to go really fast because this is normally a presentation that I do in an hour's time, and we only have 30 minutes today. But the great news is that you will get a link to the recording. So if at any point uh, you feel like, oh my gosh, I missed what she just said, don't worry. We're going to send you the recording, and you can go back and watch it as many times as you want to before my voice starts to grind on you. Uh, so like Karen said, we're going to talk today about practice management. <clears throat> and I have historically done webinars based on why you need practice management. We talk about all the great things that it does for you. And that has always sort of been my favorite webinar to do, but what we realized is that people actually need help figuring out which one. And the market has changed so significantly in the last five to 10 years as far as the number of options particularly the number of options in the cloud space, that it's really important for our, our law firms to consider the importance of taking the time, thinking about the features, determining whether the features fit into your long-term plan or your goals or your needs, and then making the right decision. It's funny that I that I think this, but I've honestly talked to people who spend more time figuring out which streaming service to use for cable or which cell phone to buy or you know which um, uh, uh, airline to select then they do figuring out the number one tool that they're going to use to run their businesses so I really encourage you to think about what we're going to talk about today before you spend any money and spend a lot of time and make sure that you're picking a practice management program for your firm for the right reasons so Oh, Karen already covered that, so I'll go past that. So we're going to talk today about navigating your practice management software options. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that beyond just seeing a list of features that are included in a practice management software, that you understand what they do. We can say things like email integration or calendar integration or customization or workflows, but what does that really mean? Then I want to show you the features. This is the part that takes a lot of time, so that's why I'm going to go really fast. And then what your job is, is to, to determine what features are most important to you. And you can use this slide deck that Karen is going to send you in the form of a PDF. When you are vetting out practice management programs, there are tons of questions on each of these slides that you should be asking any vendor or consultant who is trying to um, work with you to figure out the right piece of software for your company. So let's get started. One of the number one features that we hear about in practice management programs is something called email integration. And as I mentioned, sometimes the terms email integration mean different things to different people, and in fact, mean different things to different vendors. So it's really important to understand that if you're talking about email integration, you always want to ask if the email integration with a particular practice management program is compatible with Outlook, Gmail, both, or if you use some other Outlook provider, sorry, email provider, that it works with the email that you use. And believe it or not, you need to make sure that there are no other email services in use at your firm because someone else might be using something that doesn't support the email integration. And so you need to make sure that you look at this from a 10,000 foot view and you know everything you need to know about the email you are currently using and whether or not it will integrate with your new potential practice management program. So why do we care about email integration? Well, years ago we used to really focus on document management, right, and being able to go to a particular client and matter and see all of their documents. But as the uh, form of communication has changed with our clients, email really represents as many important pieces of documentation as documents or files, PDFs, uh, Word documents, etc. So email integration matters because we want to make sure that all of the communication that we have about our matters are living in one place. It's also important because your little email folders that you create in Outlook or Gmail, those aren't collaborative generally. Most of the time those are local folders in your local Outlook or Gmail account that no one else on your team can see. So if you squirrel away emails, while it's a, a good start from an organizational perspective, if you squirrel away emails in a folder in your inbox, no one else on your team, your paralegals, your legal secretaries, your associates, your law clerks, no one else has access to that communication that you had that was relevant to the case. It's also really hard to bill for your time when you're keeping everything in Outlook. Practice management programs that have email integration often then give us reminders or ways to easily track our time for the work we did uh, creating or responding to emails. 
So the questions that you need to ask is, is it all or nothing? Uh, and what I mean by that is, what if we have five people that use Outlook and two people that use Gmail? Will email integration work for everybody? Um, can we have people using different systems? And if it's an add-in, which oftentimes it is, um, you need to make sure that it's going to work if someone is using a Mac. There are programs out there that have phenomenal Outlook add-ins. But it might not be as sophisticated of an add-in if someone is using Outlook on a Mac. Really important to have your own technology picture in hand and understand it so that you ask the right questions about email integration. So I want to show this really quickly to just kind of give you an idea of why it is so important. So I'm going to bring over a number of different products today, and I'll do my legal disclaimer on all of it. I'm not showing you anything that you should take away as a recommendation or an endorsement. I'm showing you a variety of programs on the market to help highlight the feature and what it will do for you. So if I come into a particular matter in my practice management system, and right now I'm going to be I'm going to go into the um, Michael Larson matter. I can go to that matter and I can say, just show me a particular uh, set of information. Of course, it's going to act like a problem for me today. Hold on a second. Let's try this again. Let's go home. Let's try Matter Manager. Let's go Documents. Oh, okay, well, I'll show you a different one. Um, always during a demo, something goes wrong. So I'm going to come into the uh, a Matter here in a different program, and I'm going to click on the Matter. I'm going to open it up. And one of the things that you'll notice is that I can go to a section called communications where I can see all of the communications, whether they be notes, emails, etc. How does email integration work so that an email actually lands here? If you go into your Outlook account, and I just have my Outlook account sorted by something non-confidential, um, I can come into an email in my in my inbox and I can come down to the bottom and I can find the matter that I want to attach this email to. So if I search for Drummond, for example, I can pick the, um, the Millie Drummond probate, I can hit assign, and now this email that I've received is now saved to that matter. If I want to send a new email, I can hit new email. I can, of course, send it to whomever I need to. And down at the bottom, I can address it or attach it to the appropriate matter from this perspective as well. I'll hit send, and now that email has been saved to that particular matter in my practice management system. So let's go find that matter, and I will show you where it landed. So there's the matter. If I come into the communications, you will see that I have one sent item and one item in my inbox. So the beauty of email integration is that I can take something from Outlook and get it shared in a location that is collaborative, that everyone in my office has access to. Now, one of the other things that you will find often with email integration, and it's a good question to ask, is can I be prompted to save the email when I hit send? You'll notice in the example I just gave you, I had to remember as a user to attach the email. Some programs will prompt you to save the email. So I'll just try that again. I'll say new email, and we'll do another test, and I'm going to hit the send button. Some programs will pop up a reminder. This happens to be Practice Master that says, hey, don't forget to create a journal record for this. So I'm going to put this on the Michael Larson matter, and I'm going to hit save. And now, <laughs> now that email will be saved on that particular matter. So understanding why you care about email integration and what it can actually do for you is a really important question to ask. Communication in one place, making emails collaborative, being able to bill for your time. <clears throat> Okay, the next page is calendar integration. Very similar to what we just talked about, but the important part about calendar integration is that people often are using Outlook or Gmail for calendar, and it's really important that whatever program they use for practice management will enable them to maintain some element of Outlook and Gmail because those are the calendars that are syncing to their mobile devices. There's a, there's a calendar synchronization with your phone. We don't want you using a practice management program that would kill your ability to see your calendar from your phone. But we want real-time integration. So if you're out at the courthouse or at a meeting or just on vacation and someone back in your office puts something on your calendar through your practice management program, that needs to be syncing over to Outlook or Gmail or Google, I should say, 
and then syncing over to your phone. So the calendar integration is a really important feature. So why does it matter? Well, one, having your calendar integrate with your practice management program gives you calendar redundancy and backup, which your malpractice carriers are going to love. Gives you flexibility. If you want to use your Outlook and Gmail calendars or Google calendars, you still can, but you also have this other player in your practice management. Gives you mobile device access. It because the world still uses Outlook and Google Calendar, you can still do things like accept invitations. Again, we're going to see here in a minute how using the calendar integration helps you bill for time. But the questions to ask when we're talking about calendar integration, and these are very important questions, is does calendar integration include tasks? Because it doesn't always. In some products, some vendors think, yeah, the calendar is appointments and to-dos or tasks. But some programs do not consider tasks to be part of the calendar. And so when they say they have Outlook calendar integration, you might assume it has appointments and tasks, but it doesn't have tasks. So these are important questions to ask because a lot of us grew up using really powerful features in Outlook where I can maybe drag an email to the task menu and create a to-do easily or I have a quick step for to-dos. And if I purchase or implement or invest in a practice management program that does not synchronize tasks over, I might feel like really disappointed in the way the product performs. So some questions to ask. Does the calendar integration include tasks? Is it bi-directional? Meaning, I understand that if I put my calendar item in the practice management program, it's going to sync over to Outlook and therefore my phone. But what if I start it in my phone? Will it go back to Outlook and then will Outlook push it to the practice management program? Very important, very important feature to clarify. Is it all or nothing? Again, what if some people use the Outlook calendar, some people use the Google calendar? And finally, if it's an add-in, does it work on Macs? All really important, <clears throat> excuse me, all really important features to consider. Contact integration. Very, very similar to everything I've said about email integration and calendar integration. But is there contact integration? Many times we are going into a practice management program with years and years of contacts that we may have been storing in Outlook. Can I get those over if I go into a new system? Will it integrate with my Outlook and Google contacts? And what if it does, but I've got five or six people using it? How does this system handle conflicts? Let's say Karen has my name in Outlook and, and Debbie has my name in Outlook and Baron has my name in Outlook and Steve has my name in Outlook and everybody turns on contact integration. When we turn it on, are we going to get four Jennifer Ramuses? And what happens when Jennifer Ramuses' contact gets changed in the practice management program? Does it change it for all four of the people who are synchronizing it to Outlook? These are really important questions because what happens is after you've made an investment of time, then you realize some unintended consequences of turning integrations on. So it's really important to ask these questions of the vendor before you dive in, before you import contacts. Make sure that everyone understands how <clears throat> that contact integration is going to work. Document assembly. Many practice management programs on the market have some built-in document assembly. And for, for many firms, it is a great start on document assembly. It is absolutely not uh, sophisticated enough to, to manage uh, some of the documents that might need something like Hot Docs or Contract Express or some of the other document assembly programs out there. Um, but it is a very powerful feature that can build in some efficiency in your practice management. So questions to ask about document assembly. Is the feature native to the program? Does it come as part of the of what I pay or is it an add-on? Are there any templates that come standard or do I have to create all my templates from scratch? If you are an existing HotDocs user, does HotDocs integrate with your um, practice management system? And a bullet point that frankly I just forgot to delete from the last time I did this presentation, but it's a, it's a good point. Think about if, if your practice management system does not have document assembly that is sophisticated enough, Illinois, for example, their bar association has something called Illinois Bar Docs. Ohio has Ohio Docs. There are many bar associations, state bar associations, that actually provide form sets to their members as part of membership or for a slight add-on. So if you don't think that the document assembly that comes with your practice management system is enough, be sure to investigate what other document assembly um, systems might be available to you outside of your practice management system. This is a fun one that I like to show. Um, so I'm going to bring over a program called Smokeball. And Smokeball, one of the things that, that I like about it is that they do come standard with a lot of existing forms. So right now I am in a, um, a personal injury matter. So I'm in this personal injury matter. My plaintiff is Ann Kensington. And if I simply come up to forms and templates, you're going to see I have forms, all of these that came standard. 
I have correspondence, all of these that came standard, closing letter, letter status letter, engagement letter and fee agreement, demand letter review, um, and then I have uh, a discovery folder with things like an attestation, the HIPAA, um, um, disclosure, notice of deposition, etc. So I'm going to do a request for medical records because that's a pretty standard form that I'm going to do for just about every personal injury plaintiff that I represent. So I'm just going to double click on this. It's going to open up Microsoft Word and <clears throat> you'll see when the first flashes up, you'll see a couple of variables in the document so you can kind of see the work that's happening behind the scenes. And then I'm going to get a few prompts to answer some questions about what should go into the document. Now, of course, I tested all this before we started. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> so you'll see it's pulling in the date. It's going to pull in a, a variable for the address block, for the regarding line, and for the addressee. And it's also got some variables down here for the plaintiff's name, etc. But I'm being prompted with some built-in word prompts. What's the due date for the requested documents? Uh, maybe I want to have these by uh, March 15th. And who is signing the document? I can pick all the different people in my office who might sign this document. We'll leave this at William. How many enclosures are there? Well, I've got this subpoena and I'm going to put a, an authorization in there. So two enclosures. I hit OK. Done. The date is there. The regarding line pulled in with the name of my um, matter. Enclosed, please find a, a subpoena for the medical records of Ann. Please address these by this date, etc. Signed by scanned image of the signature, two enclosures. Now, when I hit save, you'll notice that I didn't get prompted to save this document somewhere in my network. This document is now automatically a part of the matter on this particular case in Smokeball. So there it is. So I, I launched it, I filled it in, I saved it, all because that came standard in my practice management program. That is a really powerful feature that is probably going to help you more quickly recover your investment, your return on investment, because recreating documents from the last one you did is a very inefficient way to create documents. So document assembly, when we talk about that as a feature in practice management, do not assume that you always have to buy a separate document assembly program, because most practice management programs are going to have some type of document assembly included uh, with their system. Okay. <clears throat> Workflows. Um, this is a big one. Why do workflows matter? Because it auto they automate consistent tasks and phases that apply to matters of a certain type. It helps us keep things from falling through the crack. It helps us apply a consistent process. It helps us when we hire somebody new to teach them how we do things. Malpractice carriers love that we have a habit of the way we do things. But the problem with workflows is that nearly every vendor calls them something different. So you might hear terms like calendar plans, automated checklists, triggers, chains, precedents. What you want to ask is, is there a way for me to automate a series of tasks or appointments to, to be created in my program? That's really the question, and the answer might be, yes, we have calendar plans, workflows, triggers, chains, etc. So the questions to ask, do any workflows come standard, or do I need to create workflows based on my process from scratch? The other question that we like to ask here is, are there court rule integrations? Meaning, you know, if you subscribe to a set of court rules, can those be integrated into your practice management system so that all of your civil and criminal filing deadlines, et cetera, uh, whether they're state or local or, or federal deadlines, can those be integrated into workflows? Those are really important questions to ask. What's really frustrating is when we don't ask these questions, we already subscribe to um, you know, a court rules for a set, and then we purchase practice management, and we realize that now we kind of have to live in two different worlds because we don't want to stop using our court rules, but they don't integrate with our practice management system and you actually then just made your team's job harder because now they have to do things in two places so think about everything you use before you go into a decision about practice management so I do want to show you quickly workflows and how um, how powerful they can be um, I'm going to come back to our, our uh, probate example here and what you'll notice is that in this probate matter go back to the home screen so it doesn't look quite so blank. Um, in this probate matter, this in, in this particular program action step is called a workflow. Um, and so I have right now, this case is in the phase called intake. So I can tell at a glance, where is this case? When I'm ready to move this case into the probate application phase, I'm going to click on the application phase or, or step, I should say, and the following 
tasks are going to be automatically created. I need to send my notice of application to obtain the waivers. I need to communicate with the client that their application's been filed. Um, this was just a test. I need to send notice to creditors. I need to file. It's due based on a calculated date that was part of the workflow, and it's assigned to the person playing this particular role on the file. This is going to the paralegal. This is going to the legal assistant. So I can come down here, and let me just add an accountant here really quickly. I can come down here now. I have to tell this program the date that the application was filed, and I can then hit change step. And it will move this case into the administration or into the application step. And you'll notice then when I go to the tasks list, I have all of those tasks automatically created based on the workflow really, really powerful stuff inside your practice management program. It's not a deal breaker if it's not if it's something that, that doesn't exist. Um, and it's often not one of the very first features that people are taking advantage of when they implement practice management. But I personally would not invest in a program that I could not grow into and use in a more sophisticated manner as I got more comfortable with the basics of the program. So I think workflows, while you might not be ready to use them right out of the gate, I think it's very important important to consider whether workflows exist in the program that you're looking at. Okay, document management. Document management is an entirely separate webinar that we're going to do two Fridays from now about how to pick a document management system. But the truth is, if you're just getting started with all of this software, there are many products out there that have some built-in document management that might be enough for you. And this is certainly not to discount how important true formal document management is, like something like World Docs or Net Documents. But you might be really surprised. But you need to see how the document management behaves in the program that you're looking at in order to really determine whether or not it is the right program for you. So what do I mean by, by document management inside the matter? Well, you saw it in Smokeball when I automated the document and automatically saved it, but we also have we also have the ability um, inside our programs to see the documents and to upload documents to the matter. So in this particular uh, matter right here that I have up on the screen that kind of froze up on me before, but hopefully it won't this time, um, I have a list here. I'm in the matter manager for this case, Michael Larson, and I am looking at the documents. And these are all of the documents that I have saved to this matter. And I can open a document by just double clicking and <clears throat> basically saying, take me out to the document. And here's the document. Not a very fancy one. I did it on the fly. The great thing about document management that comes in uh, your practice management is that often it means there is a, an add-in. So let's just say that I have a, a brand new document. Okay, so I'll come in here and I will say, here is my new document for Michael Larson. They're going to have an add-in where I can say, save. So PM stands for Practice Master because I'm, I'm demoing Practice Master at this point. When I hit Practice Master Save, I am going to get what they call a document management record. So I can say uh, demand letter to State Farm. I can link it to the Michael Larson case. I can say what it is. Okay, so it's a, it's a letter. It's a form. What is it? So I'll say it's a letter. I can add comments here. And I can hit save. Now this document, oh goodness, this document will then be saved to that particular matter. So when I go back to the documents page, I will see all of those, that document in addition to the other documents that I um, had for that particular client. There it is right there. Now what if I open up an existing document or I make a change to a document? I can change the document and I can come up and say PM save and it will recognize that it's already saved in my system. Do I want to update it? Do I want to create a new version or do I want to create a brand new document record? So this is pretty sophisticated document management for um, for coming as part of practice management. Sorry, I stumbled there. Um, this is pretty sophisticated. Most of your document management that's going to come with a practice management system, particularly your cloud-based systems, are going to feel more like document storage. You're kind of uploading and downloading documents. That doesn't mean it's not fantastic, but you need to understand what the features are, what you're going to get, 
so that you're not disappointed. You can also really take advantage of integrations when we're talking about document management because most of your cloud-based practice management systems and even many of your traditional client server-based programs are going to have integration with things like Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, NetDocuments, World Docs, etc. So if you don't love the document management that comes with the practice management system, but you love everything else, then move on to looking at integrations or determine whether you need them to be connected. We love when they are, but you might decide that the, having the practice management program that meets every one of your needs and a document management program that meets every one of your document management needs is a good enough reason to not link them together. Not everything has to be 100% fully integrated to still increase efficiency. Time entry. Oh my gosh, I wish I did this first so I didn't have to race through it. I am so critically, <laughs> Um, I'm so committed to time entry and, and making time entry easy on our legal professionals because it's a really, it's a tough job. It's a burden and it is a stressor because we have time to sell. We sell our hours, we sell our minutes. We often have to do it even though we feel guilty about doing it and we bounce from fire to fire and things fall through the cracks and we just end up giving away our time. And we can't do that if we want to be a profitable law firm. So time entry and why it matters and how contemporaneous time entry will work inside your program is a really, really important thing to consider. So let me bring over uh, one of the other programs here. Um, again, this is Action Step. And I'm bringing up the timesheet because I want to talk to you about a couple of cool things. One, uh, some programs will have something where they suggest what your time entry should be based on the work you've done in the database. So in Action Step, that's called Suggestions. So when I click on the timesheet and then I go to my suggestions, I can see all of my appointments for today. I can see that I moved the Geno matter into the application phase. Maybe I forgot to bill my time for that. I click Create Time Entry. My time entry comes up, it knows it's on the on the Giordano matter, it says what I did, I can change that if I want, and I enter how much time I spent. Let's say I spent 1.2. I hit save, now my time has been saved for that. So this program is helping to show me what I did today so that I don't forget to do the work. We have a program uh, that we love called Cosmolex, and Cosmolex has a feature called the Money Finder. So I can expand this Money Finder and bring it up to my screen, and I can see all of the appointments and notes and things that I've done. So if I want to come in here and say, oh, I had a phone call with Rachel, I can click Add Time, and it will create a time card for me. I can say how much time I spent. Let's just say I spent a point three, and I can hit Save, and now, oops, sorry about that, need a description. This is what I did. And now my time is long. My time has been billed. So looking at programs that have ways to remind you of what you did, phenomenal way to help capture uh, to help capture time. But also what you can what you should know is that <clears throat> our um, our practice management programs also have a way to convert things into time entries. So if I come into a matter and I want to add a new note or whatever it is, I'm often going to have the ability right from that particular note or document to do what's called um, send to billing or convert to fee. So you want to look at, and the question you want to ask is, how do I contemporaneously enter time in this program while I'm working in the system? It's a critically important, um, it's a critically important uh, thing to consider. Okay, let's get back. We have, I'm over on time, so I'll go through. Matter customization. What this means is that when I have a probate matter, I want to ask things like date of death, date fiduciary appointed, social security number of the decedent, EIN for the estate, et cetera. When I have a bankruptcy matter, I want to track things like date the bankruptcy file, what chapter did I file, who's the trustee, what district did I file in, how, what's the secured, uh, how much secured debt is there, how much unsecured debt is there. So, why we care about customization is because I might want a different set of custom fields, information I just used as an example, a different workflow, different document templates, and frankly, different billing configurations. I might do all my estate planning matters on a flat fee, but my probate is billed hourly. So we want to know that I can have a different behavior inside my practice management program for different types of matters. So you want to ask if you can customize based on matter type and if you can have different custom fields across matter types. Same is true of contacts. I don't need to track the bar number for my clients, but I do want to track the bar number, or the Supreme Court number, for attorneys in my database. So you want to ask if you can have different customization based on different contact types. 
Mobility. If you're talking about a, a traditional program, ask what the mobility options are. And if you're talking about a cloud-based program, sure, you can always launch the browser on your mobile device, your iPhone, your Android, whatever, and, and log in. But do they have an app? So make sure you understand if there's an app, what features are in the app because a lot of the apps have limited features. Most of them are going to have your mobile time entry, which is really, really what we're looking for. But you also want to be able to look up a contact or shoot an email from the app. So make sure, and if the vendor says it's really hard to demo the app, then ask them for a trial version of the software, which will give you a trial version of the app so that you can test it out for yourself. Client portals, this is a this is kind of um, you know a new thing that a lot of clients are taking advantage of to give their clients access to documents, etc. You just want to ask if they have it. You want to see it in action. You want to know if you can control what's visible in the portal. You want to understand what kind of security there is. Is it included in your subscription or do you have to pay extra for it? Um, calendaring, we really already talked about um, calendar integration, but when we talk about calendaring here, we mean we want to be able to see multiple calendars and create appointments and attach them to matters and contacts from our practice management program. It's a pretty standard feature. I would be shocked if there was practice management on the market that didn't have it, um, but it is something that you want to look at. And then conflict checking. Can I run a conflict check? Believe it or not, there are programs on the market right now that don't have a true conflict check report, which is kind of a problem. Uh, conflict checking is one of the very first thing that you should be doing. So you want to see their conflict check in action. You want to understand how you run it. You want to understand what criteria you can use. Can you limit it by date? Can you use terms and connectors? Can you print it or save the results so if you need to prove that you ran the search, you can. Timers. Uh, we talked about time entry, but timers are also another great um, feature that you should take a look at. And so let me bring up Cosmolex again. Um, one of the things that I like about Cosmolex is that at the very top of the page, you have a timer. So I can start a timer. Let's say my phone rings and I need to start the timer. Here it goes. The timer's running. I end my phone call and I simply click on this little button that says go to timesheet. And I can turn that timer into, here it is running right here, I can turn that timer into a time entry. So talked to client about settlement offer. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Right click, fix it. And I can create a time card. I didn't track any time. Sorry, I need to edit the amount of time here. Um, so I can put in the amount of time I spent here and I can then hit save and create a time card. I won't bother with that in the interest of time, uh, but it's important to, to look at timers in the system. Make sure you can easily turn them into uh, time cards or time entries. Pretty much all systems that we recommend have uh, timers. You'll notice I'm back in action step. There's a timer down here at the bottom. You want to make sure that the timer is located in a place that makes it very easy to use. How easy are they to access? Can you run more than one timer at a time? Can you convert the timer from, uh, from the timer to a time entry? These are some things you need to think about as well. Nothing really to demo here, but client and matter numbering. Is there automated client and matter numbering? Why do you care? Well, you should care if you want them numbered, but you should really care if you are converting from another program. What's the structure? Is it alphanumeric? Is it a number dot another number? Is it a number dash? Are there any limitations? Can you start off where you left off with your old system? Can you reuse a number? Um, can you renumber something that's already existing? These might seem like very technical in the weeds kind of questions, but trust me when I tell you that getting into an investment, making the change, doing the training, doing the conversion, and then realizing that you have a client matter numbering mess on your hands is a really ineffect, inefficient uh, order to do things in. You want to know what the consequences of your client matter numbering are before you start with a new program. Security. Can I make it so that some people can see some things and not others? And when you ask the question and they say, oh, yeah, we have groups, we have security, we can handle it, make them show you. Think about your situations. Think about your people and what you might want them to see or not see, particularly if you are using a practice management program that has fully integrated time billing and accounting. You might want your paralegal to be able to see everything that has to do with cases, but do you want them to be able to look at your bank balance? Make sure that the vendor or consultant that you are dealing with dives deep into security and shows you how granular can you get. What can you do? How can you protect your data? If you are not going to use a legal specific time billing and accounting program, which you can learn four Fridays from now, I think, um, you need to find out whether there's QuickBooks or Zero integration. Not all practice management programs have accounting. Some of them have time and billing, right? You can enter time, you can send a bill, things like Clio, my case, but you still need to integrate with QuickBooks or Zero. 
So while fully integrated is our favorite because there's less manual work, there are fewer mistakes, you have increased cost recovery, um, we know that a lot of people out there are running firms and using QuickBooks successfully. So make sure if you are married to QuickBooks or Zero, that you look at a practice management program that will integrate with it. Thank you so much. I went six minutes over. Um, I'll turn it back over to Karen. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. There are so many products out there. And thanks for sharing all the tips and insights and all of that into considering a practice management solution. Great job. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for attending. If you were intrigued by Jennifer's presentation today but would like to discuss it further, I encourage you to take advantage of our free 30-minute consultation. This gives you a chance to dig deeper and explore practice management solutions even more or ask any question you may have. Just reply to the follow-up email I'm about to send, and I'll take care of the rest. And don't forget, we'll be back with part two of this series next Friday. Affinity consultant Bryce Phillips will uh, help us investigate all of those document management products. So if you're saying, I know I need it, but where do I start? Join us again on February 15th. Just head over to affinityconsulting.com slash webinars and register to attend. Watch for my follow-up email shortly with the recording and slide deck from today's session. And please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows. See you again soon. Thank you.